IVF experts have known for some time that the number one reason why older women have lower IVF success rates is due to the increasing percentage of embryos with chromosomal abnormalities. But are there other reasons? What if you only looked at the transfer of tested embryos? Would you still see success rates decline with age or not? Stay tuned and find out. Let's start with some facts. Fact. The eggs you have in your ovaries today were produced before you were born. Fact. Over time, the number of eggs declines and the quality of the eggs gets worse. Fact. Because of this decline in egg quality, older women produce more embryos with chromosome abnormalities. The older you get, the worse it gets. The most common type of chromosome abnormality is when an embryo has too many chromosomes or too few. This is known as aneuploidy. Embryo testing during IVF is called pre-implantation genetic testing, or PGT. When looking for abnormalities in the number of chromosomes, it is called PGT for aneuploidy, or just PGTA for short. Now, if I did a single embryo transfer on 10 32-year-old women, on average, I would be transferring transferring a chromosomally abnormal embryo in four of them. If I did a single embryo transfer on 10 42-year-old women, I would, on average, be transferring an abnormal embryo into eight of them. The live birth rate for a transfer of a single embryo in a 32-year-old that has not been tested is around 48%. The live birth rate for the 42-year-old with an untested embryo would be just over 10%. However, a number of studies have shown that the live birth rate in older women who have transfer of a single tested embryo, that is, an embryo without chromosome abnormalities, is much higher than when an untested embryo is transferred. It seemed that once we removed the embryos with chromosomal abnormalities, older women did just as well as younger women. Recently, an analysis was conducted looking at the impact of age on live birth rates. Because trends are easier to identify if you have larger numbers, the analysis combined the results of several studies into one larger study. This is known as a meta-analysis. In total, they were able to look at close to 12,000 embryo transfers. The researchers found that compared to women who were under the age of 35, those who were over the age of 35 had about a 6% lower chance for live birth even though they transferred a chromosomally normal embryo. In fact, the older the group they looked at, the lower success rates became. 42-year-olds had about a 10% lower live birth rate compared to women under 35. They also looked at data from the US IVF registry and found that the numbers were very similar. Can we determine at what point in the process these chromosomally normal embryos are failing? Yes. Looking at one of the large studies in this analysis, we can see that most of the decline was due to a failure of the embryo to implant rather than an increase in the risk for miscarriage after implantation. We still don't know why these rates decline in older women, but there are a few possibilities. First, it could have something to do with the uterus. Recent studies indicate that when embryos from young donors are transferred into older women, pregnancy rates are very high, but also decrease by about 10% when the recipient age increases from 30 to 50 years old. Second, it is likely that there are other kinds of abnormalities in the embryos that can get worse over time, such as the accumulation of genetic mutations or degeneration of some of the chemical processes that occur in the eggs. Our Infertility TV bottom line is this. Chromosome abnormalities are the biggest part of the story when it comes to the decline in fertility with age, but there are other factors that can still affect the chances for an older woman to have a live birth even when using chromosomally normal embryos. Infertility TV is your most trusted source for accurate information on infertility and miscarriage. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button right now. A new episode is released every week. Don't miss any episodes. You can also check us out on our website, ivf1.com, where you can become a patient.